All right, hello everyone. I'm going to talk to you today about game engines, what they are, how they came to be, and um, dig into a little bit on a game engine that I used for my Stackathon project called Phaser. So um, game engines are a software framework that are designed to abstract out elements that are common to video game creation and design. Um, the functionality that's tackled in a game engine can include things like graphics rendering, the physics engine, collision detection, audio, scripting, animation, AI, memory management, and a whole lot more. Um, the use of game engines stresses modularizing the core functionality of the game away from um, the more creative elements like story and actual like design of the game. Um, at the advent of arcade gaming, um, game engines as we know them today did not yet exist. Uh, each time a developer and engineer created a game, they had to reinvent the wheel and code out all these elements that are common to all games from scratch. Um, so this obviously was very time consuming and took away resources from the more creative elements of the game like the logic and the design. Um, anyone who's played like a multiple multitude of retro games will recognize that um, a lot of games did reuse components from other games in order to rush an item to market, but a lot of times these um, elements fit very poorly into the game and created glitches doing to, due to their having been designed with like one use case in mind. So um, two men are responsible in bringing about game engines as we know them. Two Johns, John, John Carmack and John Romero. Um, in the era of console and arcade gaming, they saw that the PC had the power to be a very powerful gaming platform. Um, the story goes that Romero challenged Carmack to create an NES-like horizontal scrolling for a PC game which previously did not exist at all um, in like side scrollers, it would like fully render a page and then like shift panels. Um, Carmack was able to accomplish this and with this new scrolling functionality, they birthed um, a small series for PC games called Commander Keen. And um, they created three of those and they called Commander Keen's shared code base the Keen Engine. Um, they c then went on to create their own company, id Software, and with the release of the game Doom, they brought the idea of the game engine into the public. Um, this caused a huge turning point in the way game development was approached and defined the course of modern computer gaming. If you think of it as uh, keeping this functionality a separate focus, um, you can build on what you've created for previous projects. So the hyper-realistic, extremely crazily rendered games that we know today would not be possible without um, game engines. Additionally, the huge indie gaming movement where basically anyone can become a developer um, would not be possible without game engines. Um, okay. So there are many game engine types. Um, there's in-house engines used by major developers. There are game libraries that tackle just maybe one functionality of building out an engine and then you can make something more customizable for your game. There's mostly ready engines, those that um, tackle a lot of the harder concepts of building an engine but still require you to code and um, you can utilize the components as need be. And then there's point and click engines that use a graphical user interface. Um, so basically you don't have to know programming at all and you can still create a video game. Um, so moving on, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about Phaser, which is really fun. Um, it is an open source 2D HTML5 JavaScript game engine. Um, it uses the power of object oriented programming in order to provide lots of functionality with a really easy integration into um, your game. Uh, Phaser ca can be installed as an NPM package or its source files can be downloaded directly from its website or GitHub. Um, on the Phaser website, they provide lots of tutorials on how to get up and running with the framework. Um, and I'm gonna take you through um, a tutorial that they have on how to put together your first game. So in order to run Phaser in the browser, you first have to set up a web server. Um, this can be quickly accomplished in small lines of code in Express. 
Um, next, you would um, add in the NPM package or the um, downloaded phaser files that you have um, and create a simple HTML frame to hold the um, canvas of the game. Um, in the HTML, you'll want to include in the head the phaser.js file that includes all the functionality of phaser and then also include a script tag for a JavaScript file where all of your um, game design will be living. Um, it's worth noting that Phaser also includes functionality to abstract your game out into states to modularize your game code when you have a bigger and more ambitious project. I'm not going to be going into it here with a bigger example, but if you were going to go on and design a game with it, it's a great thing to keep in mind because it's a very useful tool. So next in um, your JavaScript file, you would initialize a new game instance using the phaser.game constructor. Um, I'll take you through the parameters that the um, phaser game constructor takes. Uh, the first two parameters are the width and the height of the canvas that the game will be rendered within. Um, if it's omitted, the default value is going to be 800 by 600. Um, you can also enter as a string a percentage that'll be the percentage width that the um, canvas will take in the browser or a given container. Um, the third parameter is the renderer to use. Phaser uses either WebGL or Canvas for rendering graphics in the browser. Um, the option phaser.auto um, auto detects the renderer available in the browser, um, looking for WebGL first, but then falling back to Canvas if WebGL is not available. Uh, the fourth parameter is the DOM element that the game canvas will be injected, um, given as the DOM ID. Uh, if no element is given, the game canvas will be appended to the body of the HTML document. Uh, the fifth parameter is uh, an object that consists of references to Phaser's essential game functions, preload, create, and update. And I'll go through briefly what each of these functions do. So preload loads all the assets of the game. These assets include things such as um, images, maps, sprite sheets, and audio that's going to be played in the game. Um, we preload all of these assets so that when your game is running, you have smooth transitions in the gameplay and there's no lags while you're waiting for things to load. Um, create takes um, some of those preloaded assets and renders them to the game canvas. It sets physics on those objects and places their starting position in the game. Um, if there's any animation set to them, it adds the animation now as well as you, as you code it out. The update function um, creates a game loop for each frame of, of play and updates the canvas based on the game's current state. So every single frame of play, it's going through everything in the update function and checking to see if there's any changes and then rendering those changes on screen. Um, the update loop contains um, the relationships between the pieces of the game and what the player controls are going to be. And then with something as simple as that, we get a finished product. And with that code we saw right there, we have this guy. So, as you can see, it's um, Phaser allows you to do a lot with just a little bit of code. Um, it has extensive resources and tutorials on how to implement certain things for your game. Um, it also has a very robust community that creates their own tutorials to help you along their way. Uh, the docs don't exactly spell things out for you, but it's um, still really fun to play around with. So. Um, it I encourage you to go use it, play with it, experiment, explore, and have fun creating. Thank you.